a right pre-coronal access point is created. The endoscopic inspection shows a cyclops ventricle with aplasia of the septum pellucidum. Upon reaching the foramen of Munro, there is a clear discrepancy between the diameter of the endoscope sheath and the size of the foramen. In order to avoid injuries in the area of the foramen of Munro, the endoscope sheath is inserted using the optical obturator, which serves to dilate the foramen somewhat. On reaching the third ventricle, one can recognize the completely closed entry to the aqueduct and in front of this, hemosiderin remnants. The closed aqueduct is carefully perforated with the Fogarty balloon catheter. In order to ensure that the fourth ventricle has been reached, the transaqueductal inspection of the fourth ventricle is performed with the 30-degree endoscope. In the depths, one can see the choroid plexus and the closed foramina of the fourth ventricle. The stent is then inserted into the aqueduct via the large working channel of the ventricular scope. The stent has numerous lateral holes in order to ensure communication of all the ventricles. After placement of the stent, the endoscope sheath is carefully removed. In order to ensure that the stent is not dislocated when removing the endoscope sheath, the inspection is performed with the thin, zero-degree endoscope through the cortical puncture channel along the stent. To prevent stent migration, at the end of the operation the stent is fixed to a burr hole reservoir.